if you build it they will come might be the biggest lie ever told. It applies to ghost baseball players, it does not apply to your website. Hello friends, welcome! Today we are talking about this part of the funnel, the initial traffic bringing people to your website. How do you get your website found by customers? Is that what sales funnels do? You invested in building this online space for your business, but there's no foot traffic. What is the online equivalent of foot traffic? Before we talk all things website traffic, if you want to learn all about marketing your services without false scarcity, spam messaging, or tricky language, subscribe to my channel where I share techniques for heart-centered automation, book promotion, and attraction marketing. First, let's talk about sales funnels, my favorite topic. Setting up a funnel on your website is really important, but it's not necessarily the funnel that is bringing people to you. It kind of depends how you look at it. So I am going to refer to a graphic here to show you that there's a couple of different ways to look at it, but in the end, it's really just semantics and the principles will be the same after this little explanation, then we'll get over to actually um, strategies for bringing people to the top of your funnel. So I really like this way of looking at the sales funnel. I found this graphic on Canva and it's the most perfect of all the sales funnel graphics that I have seen. So today we're talking about this section right here, the strangers being attracted to your website. So basically this is what we're talking about today, the social profiles, ads, the other forms of traffic. They come to your website or your landing page which is just the page of your website that you have people land on. You convert them into leads by getting them onto your email list, and then you close them with whatever method it is that you do. A lot of my clients use discovery calls, and then you deliver well and allow people to promote you with an affiliate program. So you can see that funnel shape here. And for me, I consider the start of the funnel to be the web page when people land on it and this is the filling the top of the funnel, but some people look at this as part of the funnel too. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's the same principles, so we're just going to be talking about how we get people from here to here. Okay, with that out of the way, there are three main categories of online traffic. So I'm going to talk about each one, give you some examples, and I'm saving my favorite method for last. Number one, paid. So this is your ads and this can be a great way to get your system really running passively and having those people automatically come into the top of your funnels. You don't even have to think about it and then they just filter through and the sales happen like this magic completely automated machine. That is the dream. Does it happen that way? After a lot of testing and optimizing it does. So for example, Russell Brunson, who is, you know, probably the inventor of the term funnel in the first place, even though it's been a thing forever because everything is funnels. Russell Brunson talks about how he puts big ad budgets to test and optimize his funnels. So he spends money up front to see how an ad performs, whether the landing page is converting, whether people are saying yes to these offers. Like he does a lot of testing and that's, an expenditure up front. Now, if you get it running for you, then fantastic, it starts paying off. But you have to have that budget to devote to it. And personally, I really struggle with the paid ads. I am so risk averse. I really, really hate that feeling of like gambling and seeing the money go away and not knowing if it's coming back just makes me too stressed to really effectively test. So, something I may work on in the future. I'll probably try some ads that are not Facebook ads. I'll probably try Pinterest ads, some little cheaper options, less known options. I also do boost posts. So I have a free class every week talking about how to set up a book funnel. And I have an Instagram post about that class and I'll put a few dollars into boosting that nothing wrong with boosting. I and mean, people say to do it just for awareness, but I don't see why. It has been working pretty good for me. Um, so I'm gonna be bumping up the budget on that and see how it lands out. But there's a few different ways to, to look at doing paid traffic. Another aspect that might be considered paid traffic might be if you 
hire an influencer to shout out your product or service or a blogger, pay them for using and testing your device. And that kind of leads us into method number two, which is partnership and affiliate traffic. So that's building relationships with collaborators, people who have the same ideal client as you, but they do something complementary and not competitive to you. I use this a lot because I'm very narrowed in on like, I build sales funnels, that's it. And I do it in one day, so it's over and done with. So I partner with a lot of people like ghostwriters, book coaches, publishers, people who serve that same audience, who know them, that I can provide more value to their audience, they can provide value to my audience. It's a great partnership. I meet a lot of collaborative partners through online networking events. I go to a lot of Zoom events and meet new people. JV Directory has been a great one for me. Success Champion Networks has been absolutely incredible. So I can put links to those in the description. And if you have an affiliate program for your service, all the better. Then you can be doing things like reach out to podcast hosts and have them sign up as an affiliate so that when they shout you out in your interview, they get paid for anybody that comes through that funnel. <laughs> so affiliate marketing really works both ways. You can be an affiliate of other people's programs, but you can also make an affiliate of your own program, which I have. So if somebody signs up for a VIP day, getting their book funnel built in a day, then the person who referred them gets a commission. Okay, finally, number three, my favorite, organic. Organic traffic is the one that just jibes with my brain. So that's things like your social media profiles, your Pinterest, your uh, YouTube videos. If you're doing a blog, if you're setting up SEO, SEO, search engine optimization can eventually become passive you put work in up front and it starts paying off eventually completely passively. And I do have a video about how passive income works as well. So I'll link to that. Organic is kind of like if you are a restaurant and you have somebody standing out on the sidewalk handing out samples and they get that free sample, they say this is delicious and they come back to the restaurant. So that's like your lead magnet is that freebie that brings them to your website. It lures them to your website because it's something that they love. It's something that they want and are enticed by. So you wanna be putting that freebie out on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, email signature. I am much more of the attraction marketing type. I have really not done any kind of outreach, uh, cold or warm. I do very little of that. I may increase that in the future, but I much prefer to be posting things that kind of tease people closer to me so that they are taking the first move. So posting educational content like this and then people can click on it if it sounds like something they wanna learn more about and they find out what I do and then they can go to the link in the description, they can come and say, hey, how can I work with you? Rather than me looking for ideal clients and going out and saying, what I do is something you might be interested in. So far, I haven't found a way that I feel comfortable doing that. So I much prefer like I put lots and lots and lots of content out on YouTube, on Instagram, that happens to be my favorite platform uh, on LinkedIn. And I wait for people to come to me when they see more, they've learned about what I do and they've become intrigued and they wanna learn more. And I've got that freebie, that's the free class that I talked about. So people can sign up for that to get a better sense of what it means to set up a book funnel so they understand what I'm doing in that VIP day for them, or they can take that knowledge and do it for themselves. Cause some of us are just DIYers to the core, but organic traffic just clicks for me. And SEO is something that takes a lot of time to start working, but it is how I have a book that still sells 13 years after publishing it. And I don't promote it. I don't have any ads running to it. I have barely any social profiles. I'm not updating those social profiles. It still gets found and it still gets purchased because of SEO funnels and niche. The fact that it is a topic that not a lot of competitors in. When I build your funnel for you as part of my VIP day, I bake the SEO directly in. 
and then I give you some strategies and plans for how to utilize these other parts of traffic so that your funnel can be super successful. You can check the description to get all the details about how that works and sign up and schedule your day and watch this video next for some more details about using social media to promote your books, services, and whatever you got.